going on, dudes and dude So there are some rumors now that Tony White, the defensive coordinator for the Nebraska Cornhuskers, who we did mention before, as maybe some top candidates for USC's defensive coordinator job, is apparently the one that's trending on Twitter before the last couple weeks. It has been Jim Leonard, the ex-Wisconsin defensive coordinator. But as of right now, it all of a sudden it's just switched to Tony White and even a lot of their fans are writing on X and social media that they're kind of worried and maybe they should pay up to be able to keep him and all this stuff. So, I mean, it could be good for him. Like, he could get a, a buttload of money from Nebraska also and end up staying up there. But, obviously, coming to USC and being a D.C. there is a better opportunity in most people's opinions than just staying up there in Nebraska. You never know. He will be basically... <clears throat> you know, enemy number one, their rival, because they will be playing each other in the Big Ten still. So either way, looks like this is where it might be heading to. I know Lincoln Riley recently did like a secret meeting or something like that with, I don't know if it's players or other coaches or other staff or whatever. So we'll see what ends up happening soon, but it definitely looks like it's going to be an announcement at some point this week. So definitely looking forward to that whenever the news does officially come out or not. And then, yes, when it came to the Holiday Bowl, apparently that is where USC football is being projected to play when it comes to their bowl game. And it's not that great of a bowl, but it's better than like the Alamo Bowl or some other places they were projected maybe to go because of their record and where like they had to play certain Pac-12 and other type of schools. It's weird how the bowl games go by pretty much what your conference is more than when it comes to record or how good your team is, but it's a little bit more better viewing and prestigious a place to play than out there in El Paso. Nothing wrong with El Paso, but playing in San Diego is pretty cool. So yeah, apparently their matchup would be against Clemson, who obviously won the national title a couple years back ago, and they're obviously struggling as well too, but it, it could also be the first, probably one of the first times that Lincoln Riley has ever faced against his younger brother the offensive coordinator for the Clemson Tigers. So there's that storyline as well. So whoever's putting these bowl games together, I'm sure they've thought of all this stuff and trying to find the best matchup and the juiciest story and all that stuff. So either way, it is a chance for USC to go up against a good enough team and highly talented enough players in Clemson. So I would look forward to it, but they would probably get their butt speed, especially if Caleb Williams doesn't end up playing. Still waiting on his decision, but yeah, either way, still looking forward to that matchup if it does happen for real. And then, yeah, a lot of rumors have been speculating the past couple weeks. Didn't really want to talk about it until maybe there is more insight, but of course now the Chargers are playing against the New England Patriots this week, and a lot of the rumors have been out there that Bill Belichick, their head coach, would, excuse me, become the Chargers head coach, or at some point, I don't know, because if... His team is 2-9, and nine, so he's probably trying to do as much as he can to get fired by New England. Because if it were the case that they did kept, they did keep him, then they would have to trade him. And obviously, it becomes too much for the Chargers to do if they had to end up trading for a coach, which is weird. I know that would have been the possibility for Sean Payton, which I'm pretty sure that's why they didn't do it. But to give up a first-round pick for a coach, I don't think... It's good enough, especially if he's going into his twilight years and doesn't really want to you know, put forth the effort as much. You know, it's probably way better to be in SoCal than it would be up there in New England, especially throughout the whole year. But yeah, I don't know. It could be up and down. A lot of their other news outlets out there are denying the report and say he wouldn't go there because of the owners and how much the ownership is bad out here for the Chargers, which I don't disagree with them, but... Yes, I think he has mentioned here and some other places like Carolina and Washington of all places. But either way, it's just a wait, big wait and see with Bill Belichick. He even in his press conference today or yesterday mentioned the Chargers from being from San Diego still. So I don't know if that was a little cheap jab or he just really doesn't pay attention to a lot of the stuff he says. But yes, sadly, there was a, a lot of big news come out of Duke football program last night when the quarterback Riley Leonard entered the transfer portal 
And it just made it worse because, of course, some of the top teams that he's looking at. A little bit less hate for Auburn. Just I have a little bit of hate for them. But, of course, it's between Auburn and Notre Dame. A lot of people are saying and reporting that he would be interested in, even though he has a no-contact like transfer portal entry, which means none of the coaches or anybody could be in contact with them, supposedly. He's just going to make up his decision and choose the school he wants and get in contact with them himself and make those visits. But either way, it's a big loss for Duke football. And obviously, they have a lot of talent coming in. There haven't really been as many transfers out of there yet. But, I mean, he could also end up going to Texas A&M with Mike Elko, the ex-Duke coach. You never know. But, yeah, overall, it was a pretty bad night for Duke fans. I'll get into that <laughs> Duke and Arkansas game a little bit later. But, yeah, either way, tough news to hear, especially if he's going to a hated rival in Notre Dame. A lot of people mention if Caleb Williams goes, why maybe he could be an option for Lincoln Riley in USC. But <clears throat> I don't know if, if Riley Leonard's going to wait that long to see where, if and when Caleb decides to go and then, if he does go, then decide later, maybe even early next year. But either way, it is some tough news. Yeah, the, earlier this week, the Lakers did lose pretty badly in Philly on their road trip by like 40-something points. So yeah, it was pretty bad. Like Philly was just not missing from the three-point line. And there's really no nothing you can really do. You just got to let that game play out. And they tried to get back in there. They got it down to like 10 points or something like that around halftime or in the third quarter, but it just wasn't enough to stop them. But I think LeBron did make history again in that game. I think he passed, I think it was Kareem, where it's the most NBA played minutes in NBA history, which is pretty crazy, obviously. But yeah, just another thing for him. But as I mentioned in the video yesterday that they are on the road still and playing in Detroit. And of course, Detroit had that long losing streak, but Yes, luckily the Lakers were able to get that victory against them last night, 133-107. to And D'Angelo Russell went off. He was hot. He had 35 points and 9 assists. And pretty much, I think he was like him and only Kobe have been able to score that much points and still shoot like 75% from the field, which is pretty cool. A lot of guys had scored double digits. Even I think both LeBron and AD scored tw over 20 points as well. So it was a pretty easy victory they didn't really have to play as much especially the older guys late in that game or even most of the fourth quarter but I forgot that they do have a back-to-back -back, so I believe they play tonight against Oklahoma City which is lucky that they did get some rest so they'll be able to most likely play which will be cool because that's a pretty big matchup in the west but yeah definitely looking forward to seeing what happens with their season moving forward then when it comes to Duke yes last night they were on the road in that ACC-SEC challenge. And they, of course, they had to get a tough location in Arkansas. But ended up losing that game 75-80. to 80. It was close throughout. I think it was only like a one-point lead for Arkansas at the half. And just going back and forth. And they were in it. But then, you know, Arkansas fed off that crowd. And pretty much were able to keep that lead going and bumped it up to like almost double digits and then he thought Duke was pretty much done within the last couple of minutes but they were able to make a run a couple plays a couple stops and they got it down pretty close like maybe a three-point game but yeah sadly ended up losing by five and it's a tough situation um just trying to think of who they end up playing next year because obviously they get to host this any SEC game, I doubt they're going to give them Arkansas again. So I'm pretty sure the result would have been different if it was in Cameron Indoor Stadium in North Carolina. But yeah, tough loss here to start off the season. But you got to play these games in order to get better for March Madness and the tournament. So not so mad about the loss officially. But yes, it just sucks when you're that close. And earlier in the week, Duke was ranked number seven in the AP poll. So they did move up a couple spots from that other loss they suffered the other week or so ago against Arizona. But yes, they most likely will either stay around the same or lose, depending if they have a game or not. I can't officially remember if they do. They most likely do have one a little bit later 
this week. But either way, they should still stay around the same as long as they win. And then they did hire Justin Robinson as the director player of development, who is an ex-Duke player. He came on as a walk-on. He's the son of uh, David Robinson, the ex-Spurs great. He was able to earn a scholarship and stuff. And pretty much in his final game at Duke, he was like going off against North Carolina. That's one of the main reasons why Duke won that game. And then right when they're going into the tournament, I think that's when the whole 2020 COVID shutdown thing happened for them, which sucks because they were like one of the hotter teams, especially at that time, not only in the ACC tournament, but in the Pac-12 tournament as they're in the March Madness tournament, I believe they were going to be as well. But yes, overall, it's a nice hire. And he did have a couple years like overseas playing. And I think he was actually even in Israel playing when all this stuff happened a couple months ago, which sucked. Luckily, he was able to get out safely. But yeah, either way, it's nice hire and be able to develop from within, as they say, the brotherhood. So that's pretty cool. And USC wide receiver Brendan Rice was recently accepted or invited to the Reese's Senior Bowl, Reese's Senior Bowl. So it pretty much says he's going to the NFL draft officially because you don't really get to play in those unless you are going into the draft. So congrats to him and I'm pretty sure he will be doing good, at least get drafted high, especially do good at the combine because he's like 6'3 and can run over 20 miles per hour. Definitely has some of that talent that his father had, but yes, definitely looking forward to seeing what his future holds. And then USC basketball played last night. They were able to get that victory against Eastern Washington, 106 to 78. And Boogie Ellis went off for 28 points as well. So a nice victory for them. They should have destroyed this team as they did, as I mentioned in the last video. So definitely very happy about that. And then Chargers defensive lineman Khalil Mack was named the defensive player of the month on the AC AFC side, which is pretty cool. He's obviously been balling and one of the guys that they should bring back or rework his contract to be able to make it work out for the twilight years of his career. And then ex-Duke player Paolo Boncaro was named the Eastern Player of the Week on the East side. So that's pretty cool for him. A nice accomplishment and definitely been playing pretty well that whole team. A lot of surprising teams in the M NBA so far. Ex-Chargers great tight end Antonio Gates is a Hall of Fame semifinalist for the class of 2024. So hoping he does finally get in there because it's definitely well deserved. Another report came out that the Lakers are pretty much more interested in the tandem of Caruso and DeRozan compared to getting Zach Levine. So that's obviously an easier deal money-wise and not have to give up a lot of more future stuff. So definitely looking forward to seeing if that does end up happening. And then Duke did have a couple players enter the transfer portal. The defensive lineman Aeneas Peebles, Pebbles, hopefully I'm saying that correct. And a cornerback, Jaden Watkins, entered the transfer portal recently. So, see the, where this goes. I know Aeneas was one of the top players, younger players on their team. So, he would look nice on the defensive line for USC. But we'll end up seeing where he goes. Anaheim Ducks did lose 1-3 to three to the Vancouver Canucks. So, that sucks. So, that's pretty much how their season's been going so far. And Duke's defensive lineman, Dwayne Carter, did win the Jim Tatum Award. Which I guess is given to the top student athlete in the ACC, so that's a pretty good accomplishment for him. I believe he's going to the draft as well. He's one of their better defensive line players. And at least 10 players na were named to the all-ACC teams on the football side, so that's a really good job by the Duke football team as well. So congrats to them. When it comes to some miscellaneous news, yes, the singer of Sum 41 and creator Derek Wibley pretty much said that He's kind of trying to find to put more of a focus and interest into something else other than Sum 41 right now. Because I guess after they mentioned that they're going to be ending the band, basically, I don't know exactly what that means for him. If he's going to produce more or make some other music for himself as a solo artist, we'll just have to wait and see. But definitely looking forward to their double album coming out at some point in the spring of next year. So definitely looking forward to that. And then... Of course, we always hear this talk about an Alita Battle Angel sequel, which I like the first one. It could have been better, but yes, apparently Bob Iger of Disney pretty much told James Cameron that he would only allow a number two if James Cameron was going to direct it officially. I know 
in between like Avatars 3 and 4 or something like that, Cameron is directing some Hiroshima adaptation of a book, some type of movie about that. So a lot of people want him to do that, but I think a lot of people want him to do the Alita Battle Angel sequel too, because he could probably do an even better job than Robert Rodriguez did. But we'll never know. We'll end up seeing, hoping for the best. So yeah, thanks for watching people. Like, subscribe, comment down below. Let me know what y'all think. Have a great day. Bye.